Video game makers and video game fans both love the thrill of hidden video game details. In fact, entire online communities have sprung up around documenting these, so shout out to our gaming details in particular for spotting a bunch of the following, and while the majority consist of mind-blowing easter eggs and cute references, it's those details that change the way you view certain moments in the game, or change the game as a whole, that stick with us for longer. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 gaming moments impossible to view the same way after this video. Number 10, Rocksteady added a breathing animation to unconscious enemy goons, Batman Arkham Asylum. Across the vast majority of his TV and film adaptations, Batman has stuck firmly to his no-killing rule. Well, apart from the movies and television shows where he straight up shoots people, sets them on fire with the flames of his Batmobile. Anyway, despite these exceptions, it is an important rule. And it's also a rule employed by the version of the Dark Knight seen in Rocksteady's Arkham games. Now, at first glance, that might not seem like the case, as old Batsy will routinely dispatch enemy goons in ways that look pretty lethal on the surface, like blowing them up with explosive gel, kicking them over a railing and sending them plummeting to the floor, or even just landing a skull-crushing punch or DDT on their noggins. This brutality has become something of an in-joke over the years, with players forced to accept the ridiculous fact that Batman's extremely violent style somehow keeps his victims in the land of the living. To alleviate your worries of committing manslaughter though, you can zoom in on the chest of an unconscious thug in Arkham Asylum for instance, and see that the devs have actually added in a breathing animation to their lifeless bodies, which simply isn't that visible unless you go out of your way to look for it. Number 9. Foxes lead you to treasure due to an unintended AI quirk, Skyrim. Skyrim is a pop culture juggernaut of a game, one that spawned countless myths, theories and urban legends over the years. Arguably the most bizarre of these myths revolves around the so-called treasure foxes though, that can be found around the map. It's said that if these foxes are followed, they will lead players to secret areas, treasure, or maybe even both. This myth gained traction because, well, it actually appeared to be true for some of the players who tried it. But, as one of the game's developers recently revealed, the logic behind these thrifty foxes is almost as bizarre as their in-game behaviour. So, first up, while it is true that foxes can lead players to treasure, this was not an intended design choice on Bethesda's part. Rather, it was an accidental quirk of the game's programming, one that causes foxes to head towards camps, ruins, and other points of interest, locations that, you guessed it, will often contain treasure. So the next time you follow a Skyrim fox to a pot of gold, just remember that this is all down to a random side effect that nobody at Bethesda anticipated. Number 8. The story is based on World War One letters written by the lead dev's grandfather, Valiant Hearts. Years before Ubisoft pivoted towards creatively bankrupt titles like Tom Clancy's X Defiant, the studio put out several several unique, lower-budgeted games on its 2.5D UbiArt engine. Stuff like Rayman Origins, Child of Light, and Valiant Hearts The Great Wall. All of these games are fantastic, but Valiant Hearts is one that many people probably haven't played. Its audience is obviously quite limited due to it being a story-heavy side-scrolling puzzler, but the game deserves a lot of credit for attempting to keep things as historically accurate as possible, while still providing a fun experience for players. Well, fun might be the wrong word in that sentence, because things can get pretty dark at times, and what's more, the inherent emotion that stems from the game's World War I setting runs a lot deeper than most players will realise. Going into the game, the devs didn't want to create a heightened work of fiction. In fact, they wanted things to be as grounded as possible, so they actually based the game on letters and documents written by the lead designer's grandfather, who was a soldier during the war, where he spoke about losing his leg and the general horrors of trench life. The game is already emotional as it is, but when you discover how personal this project was for the people who made it, well, the experience hits even harder. Number seven, the sword-inflicted cuts on Nate's clothes are dynamic, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. The devs over at Naughty Dog are masters of detail, with each of their releases pushing Sony's PlayStation hardware to its absolute limits. Just take a peek at Uncharted 4, for instance, which is stuffed with cool moments, like an Assassin's Creed-style synchronization at the top of a clock tower, or the dozens of optional conversations littered throughout the world that the vast majority of gamers won't ever see. The final sword fight against Wraith, though, contains a moment like this as well, displaying the game's remarkable attention to detail in the graphical department. Now, we all know that swords are really, really pointy, and should definitely be avoided if some douchebag rival treasure hunter is waving one 
in your face. But for players who can't dodge all of Wraith strikes, well, Nate's clothing will actually react to the sword in realistic fashion, tearing open the fabric and cutting his flesh. On the other hand, if you don't get hit, our rugged hero will be squeaky clean at the end of the sequence. It is an awesome little touch that enhances the brutality of the fight without you even realising. But when you do become aware of it, it's impossible to unsee, and maybe you'll even be that bit more careful to not get Nate sliced up like a slab of meat. Number 6. The heartbreaking truth behind the dog plushie, Apex Legends. Every game has easter eggs, and online only battle royales like Apex Legends are no different. For instance, there's a hidden Loch Ness monster in the swamp area of the King's Canyon map, and there's a Mega Man reference on one of the weapon skins. But perhaps the weirdest thing players found in the game is this dog plushie tucked away in the corner of the firing range. Now, at first, it might just seem like a bit of a joke, like one of the devs was having a laugh by placing an adorable little dog toy in a missable corner of the map. But in actual fact, the truth is infinitely more heartbreaking. See, the dog plushie, along with an identical one found in the market area of King's Canyon, was put in the game by Jason McCord, one of Respawn's senior devs. McCord's real-life dog died during development. Now, of course, this isn't the kind of game you'd expect to contain such a gut-wrenching detail, but discovering the plushie while knowing its backstory makes for a surprisingly emotional moment. Number 5. Vass intentionally shoots the lighter he placed in Jason's pocket, Far Cry 3. One of the main criticisms leveled at Far Cry 3's story is that Vass, the psychotic main villain of the game, has plenty of opportunities to kill protagonist Jason only for the hero's plot armour to repeatedly keep him alive. But something that many people miss, including myself so hands up here, is that Vass doesn't really want to kill Jason as hinted at by Vass's musings about insanity and how it means that you're doing the exact same thing over and over again, expecting things to change. Clearer evidence of Vass's reluctance to murder his enemy can be found in the middle of the game though, when Jason's helicopter crashes and Vass shoots him in the chest after he crawls away from the wreckage. Miraculously, of course, Jason survives, revealing that a lighter which was sitting in his chest pocket took the bullet for him. And how did that lighter get there? Well, in an easily forgotten moment during the earlier prison sequence, it's actually Vass who puts it in his pocket. Then later on, after Jason's chopper accident, we see that Vass purposefully aims at the lighter in order to keep his foe alive. Once you connect these dots, it completely changes your perception of the pair's rivalry. Number 4. Cal's max level is nowhere near as powerful as you think it is. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was a bloody enjoyable romp through a galaxy far, far away, putting you in the shoes of Jedi Padawan Cal Kestis and letting you play with a wide range of force powers. From throwing stormtroopers around like ragdolls to deflecting laser bolts with your lightsaber, the game makes you feel incredibly powerful, like you can take on the whole of the Star Wars universe with one arm tied behind your back, or I guess cut off would be more appropriate for this franchise. And yet, in spite of all of this, Cal is basically just a noob when it comes to his abilities as a Jedi. If the climactic battle against Darth Vader doesn't make it abundantly clear that our hero is relatively weak when compared to the legendary Sith and Jedi scattered throughout the galaxy, he is something that does. The portion of the skill tree that's available for players to unlock is tiny, and the rest of it stretches far off into the distance, indicating that Cal has barely scratched the surface of his full potential. Once you realise this, it really does put the game into perspective. The only reason Cal feels so powerful is because he's basically been slaughtering stormtroopers and wild animals the whole time, which, even for a Padawan, is the equivalent of pretty much playing on easy mode. His true test, just like the rest of that skill tree, lies ahead. Number 3. James breaks the fourth wall during the opening scene, Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 2 is a game where a lot of messed up stuff happens, with troubled protagonist James Sunderland suffering strange visions and hallucinations, all the while fending off terrifying monsters in the titular fog-smothered town. Needless to say, it's an unsettling experience, but unbeknownst to most players, one of the creepiest moments in the story happens right in the opening cutscene. Roughly a minute into the game, there's a great shot of James staring at himself in the mirror, which has become quite an iconic frame in the two decades since the title released. However, as discovered by a Redditor who cranked up the brightness of the image, it turns out that James isn't looking at himself at all. Ominously, he's actually gazing straight at us, the players, a detail that isn't visible during normal play. Whether an intentional design choice or simply an optical illusion, as some players believe, it nonetheless works as a reminder of how fractured James's psyche has become, and either way, you'll never view this intro the same way again. 
Number two, the Tire Graveyard references a real-life environmental disaster, Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V's enormous map is littered with tons of fascinating secrets, many of which are hidden well off the beaten track. Take the Tire Graveyard, located on the west coast for instance, which, as evidenced by its lack of online coverage, very few players have actually stumbled across themselves. Even for those who did find it, it's honestly not all that interesting at face value. But there is a lot more to this underwater oddity than first meets the eye. Rather than it being a joke or a meaningless point of interest, the Tyre Graveyard is a reference to the Osborne Reef, a man-made construct that was designed to serve as a habitat for marine life. However, the project failed and the tyres were left at the bottom of the ocean, reducing them to waste. It's crazy that Rockstar put this much thought into an area of the game most players won't ever see. And once you know the Tyre Graveyard is based on a saddening slice of reality, this curious sight will strike you in a totally different way. Number one, the sky Scars' whistles have meanings that only Abby understands, The Last of Us Part 2. As mentioned earlier, Naughty Dog's attention to detail is truly remarkable, and these high standards did not slip with the studio's latest release, The Last of Us Part 2, a menacing faction that has abandoned all forms of technology, choosing bows and arrows over guns and communicating with whistles during the heat of battle, a tactic intended to prevent their enemies from listening in. At first, you might just assume that all these whistling noises are simply random sounds plugged into the game, but in reality, Naughty Dog took the time to give each individual whistle its own separate meaning. So if you turn on the subtitles while playing as Ellie, the whistles won't have any descriptive labelling, as the scars are new to this character, and as such they'll just be called whistles in the text. But if you turn on the subtitles while playing as Abby, each whistle will now be named differently, whether it's a call whistle, a response whistle, or a danger whistle. It is a brilliant little touch that further reinforces how Abby is much more skilled and experienced than Ellie when it comes to surviving in this location. So that's our list, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below, did you pick up on these little details when you played through these games, and are there any really cool ones that I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.